Greetings, Cosmeteers, and welcome back to the Fire Ant with its fresh look of paint that uh, got applied between episodes. I hope you like it because this is probably uh, the one I'm most proud of at the moment. It definitely sits up there with the Hercules in terms of having a consistent theme throughout the ship. It also sits up there with the Hercules in terms of its size, frankly, which uh, surprised me as well. But this is our new missile ship. Now, I've received quite a lot of very, very useful advice, not least of which I'm sure many of you will be happy to hear. I have fixed the uh, the walkway. So many of you pointed this out. I am sorry that I missed that one. It does happen more often than I would like to admit, if I'm perfectly honest. I uh, managed to get walkways the wrong way round here and there in most of my builds, but I usually catch it myself after staring at it long enough. But that one completely, completely slipped by me. Uh, we've also received uh, a good number of uh, suggestions on how to just improve the current design or how to change the design. I will address those comments in another episode because uh, this one is going to be uh, going to be mostly dedicated to the scarab over here. Uh, we will be having a look at how I'm controlling the, the fire ant. I feel that at least some of the con the uh, comments and concerns regarding the fire ant probably come down to me learning how to use it a little bit better though, so we'll, we will get to that. But as <laughs> some of you may well have noticed in the last episode, we've got a couple of, uh, a couple of things to do over here. Also, so many things to do over here. <laughs> We're slowly pulling apart a bunch of racks at the moment. And uh, so my crew are all over the place. But we have plans. So let's go ahead and start addressing some of them. Now, as I'm sure most of you worked out, uh, I intend to swap the central uh, weapon system, but I don't intend to get rid of the ion weapon system at all. Uh, in fact, my hope is to relocate the, the beams to have two focusing beams that kind of converge on our enemies. Uh, now, this does run the risk of splitting the beams in such a way that uh, should our enemy have shields across multiple parts of the ship, each beam might be hitting a different shield, which isn't ideal. So uh, we're going we're gonna to see what we can do. Now, my plan, I'll lay out the plan first because I feel this one's going to be an ultra fiddly one. So it might take me like half an hour or something to settle on the design. And uh, I'm not going to torture you by forcing you to watch me doing that. Uh, but my plan is thus. We are going to have the ion beams exit the ship to the side to a redirection crystal that will serve more or less the same role as this one, in that all it, it does over here is redirect the beam to the firing beam, which will sit somewhere in this, uh, this location and will then channel the beams onwards into a central point on the enemy craft. Now, I might be able to get away with using the crystals just as is down here, and if that is the case, then that's gonna just be a happy coincidence because it means that this beam crystal should it be destroyed it effectively has a backup now i may also try to implement a shield for this system which might necessitate shunting the the front of the scarab forward a little bit more so we can end up with a super shield something like that just so that we've got a little bit more coverage on that side and i think that would uh, work very very well if i can make it happen but let's see what I can do with uh, a couple of minutes and a plan. Okay, I think I have something workable. As you can see, I've included a super shield over here, so we've now got a much larger dome, though be aware that that dome ends here. It will be projected out to about there, but it does not continue on down. Though as armor is blown off, should it be blown off, hopefully not, then the, the super shield will actually start to project a little bit further down. Uh, We've had to move around some of the point fence to compensate for the change in this limb, though I happened upon a design I liked even more than the previous one, which seemed a little bit bulky to me. I'm not 100% on, uh, on the aperture here, 
But nevertheless, we do have a crystal that even right now would be able to focus somewhere around here, which is about as close as anything ever gets anyway. But I do still need to put a secondary aiming crystal somewhere up here. But at this point, this crystal can go away. We've got a bit of extra armor down around here. I haven't added any extra uh, supplies here. We've still got two supplies who will be able to manage all of the energy distribution needs down here, hopefully. Again, if these aren't being hit, they have a very, very slight draw, but just to make sure that they can move around reasonably fast, I have popped down a, uh, a people mover over there. Now that doesn't address one of the biggest elephants in the room of the Scarab, and that is, at present, it's unable to maintain um, complete operation of its uh, of its ion beams, and that is a problem. Something that we're going to need to address. Now, another thing that I've noticed whilst having a look at the thruster clusters around here is these thruster clusters aren't completely self-contained. Now, they're only uh, a little bit shy. They're about 0.4 energy shy. If all thrusters were firing constantly, all the time, they would be about 0.4 energy shy of being able to sustain this. However, I feel that it might be worthwhile if I were to instead have a secondary power plant, and this power plant would also help this thruster cluster. And I'm considering that, as it would free up this reactor to dedicate much more of its time to the ions here. However, um, this can produce 16, uh, sorry, uh, can produce 13.5 uh, power a second. Uh, two of these requires 2.5, so four of them requires five. So in total, we are consuming 10 power a second from this. This reactor by itself should comfortably be able to manage that power draw. Now, we're going to be adding in another system, certainly, um, but I don't think it can do that as well as run these thruster clusters. So I think I need to isolate at least the rear thruster clusters and possibly the side ones as well. And that way we will have enough power running into this system to theoretically keep it all, all rolling just as long as I can get people moving around the system fast enough. And I have some plans to, to that end. But first I need to make a couple of adjustments to the thrusters and then we'll see where we stand from that point onwards. After much deliberation, uh, we have our enclosed thruster clusters on the left and indeed the right. I've added an extra supply bunk that will uh, specifically work each reactor and each reactor will man its shield, its point defense, but both reactors will supply the engine room. This should keep this engine room, again, the odds of us ever having all thrusters firing at the same time is, is zero because they would be working against each other. But I like having a little bit of wiggle room. Uh, we'll come back to this mess in just a moment. We've also done the same for the thruster clusters down here. Each thruster cluster and its shield well within the capabilities of a single room. Uh, so we've now got uh, engine crew and also supply crew for each reactor uh, they will uh, I've also added an, an extra point defense as well and then finally we come back to this <laughs> uh, this is driving me mad uh, I'm not gonna like it it's actually really distracting uh, but to cover what you're looking at here because I completely forgive you if you can't tell uh, I have got the three jump drives uh, equidistant from each other with their own storages in fact I'm kind of inclined to push this one back a little bit, either that or pull this one across. And that makes a lot of sense now, because I had to move a lot of things around and I wasn't really sure where I was gonna put things. But this makes a little bit more sense to me since uh, ideally this will have been loaded up with all of the Hyperium long before we need it. And then it's just a matter of bringing power over ac across to it. Now, everything else going on here is just a mess. Uh, the primary culprit in this mess is the fact that these are so different in size. And the only other thing that I could want to put here is, again, so enormously different in size. Nothing is going to fit well. 
So I'm just going to have to accept that that's, it's not going to fit well. And uh, as much as it pains me, we're just going to have to learn to live with it. Uh, unless some clever so-and-so in the comments has uh, a solution. Uh, please, please share it with me, because slowly rotting my brain. Uh, nevertheless, over here, you've probably uh, got your attention on the fact that we've got some bunks over here, right below each of the ion beams. That is so that each ion beam can have a dedicated pair of suppliers. This reactor should easily power everything we're asking it to power, and then some. So the problem wasn't the amount of energy we had, it was how the energy was getting to where it needed to be. So first solution, I'm giving each thing that draws power its own dedicated supply crew. That's a bit overkill, if I'm perfectly honest, especially, and I'm really tempted to change this, especially that uh, whilst most things measure the amount of power they draw in charges per second, the bridge measures it in charges per minute. I'm fairly certain that these two together, a single supply crew, uh, supply pair will be able to manage that. In fact, I'm so confident in this, I'm going to make that change right now. Uh, there we go. Uh, actually, we'll uh, quickly draw that. Ah, uh, why? Control Z to the rescue. There we go. That will uh, that will keep everything sorted there. Generally, I like having my suppliers right next to the thing that they're supplying, but that's not always going to be the case, uh, or rather, going to even be possible. Uh, to make this look a little bit nicer with the uh, <laughs> with the uh, people mover, I will actually uh, roll you around in this direction and do that. There we go. But they'll easily be able to get up there into the supply and then get back down. That being said, now I'm only using one of you. Oh, so many new possibilities open up. It's truly marvelous. I can actually have you go straight into the reactor, which is what I like to do anyway. And you'll still have to come down here though. Uh, but there we go, that, that gets our power to where it needs to be. Our crew can get to where they need to be to do their jobs and uh, everything else should be fine. And I have grown incredibly fond, if you didn't notice, on isolating sections of the ship. This will give us a lot more uh, security should a shot manage to get through the, the rear, which is the most likely place. Um, you know, this is the weakest, but this is the most likely in my opinion. It's going to have to go through several layers of, of armor to get to my bridge, and that is that is what I would like. Ultimately, I don't want it to get to my bridge, so that the more armor I can put in the way, the better I'm going to feel. Uh, we'll have that go all the way down, and since this now will dramatically improve the efficiency, I'll have two doors so they can go in, and then they can come straight back out. There we go. That should handle everything going on down here. I might even have this energy supplier responsible for, for loading all of these, or, you know, porters can, can handle the moving around of just the odds and sods that we've got. In fact, given that, I can have two porters kind of stationed there, and they'll go to where they need to be and, and load up the, uh, the jump drives. In fact, uh, no, I don't have the room over there to do it, but I do have the room right here to do it. Sure, let's uh, let's make that happen then as well, and we'll pop in some blocks. I, I honestly intended to bring you back just to explain that I was displeased with this rather than to solve the problem on camera. I hope you can forgive me, but you know, inspiration has struck. Uh, right, you don't turn down the muse when, when she decides to pay you a visit. All right, in regards to our energy flow for the ions, a lot of people um, suggested that the problem with the energy moving between the reactors was the doors and that I didn't have enough ways out. So by having this much larger people roundabout, hooray, we've got one in, uh, this will allow three people to enter or exit the, uh, the reactor here. Though, why are there so, so many doors around? Well, actually, I kind of... I don't mind it necessarily because they can go in and come out at the same time. I'll, I'll leave these ones in for now, but th this one doesn't need it because it can be uh, supplied directly via the ion, uh, via the uh, the reactor over here. So it really doesn't need those extra doors. All right, I think more or less everything is where it needs to be. Still need to replace the aiming crystals at the at the very peaks of the uh, mandibles, but it's time to fill in this conspicuous gap. Okay, you, you don't want to know how long this took me to decide on a design. And I'm not even 100% on this, but I'm, I'm at an acceptable 90% 
on on this feeling like it belongs in the theme, the insect theme of our show. But I again, I reiterate, you do not want to know how long it took me to do this. Any respect you have for me as a person, not just as a creator, but as a person, would evaporate like the darkness before dawn. This, oh my lord. Nevertheless, we are back down here. Now, I wanted to bring you back for this one because there are a couple of uh, important things to go over. First and foremost, a railgun, which is obviously what we're going to be putting here, needs ammo. Currently, we don't actually produce ammo down here. We produce a, uh, a fair bit of it up here, but we produce as much as we need for this weapon system, uh, for the flak cannons. I don't want to take from that. So the options we have are pretty simple. I need to produce the ammo for the railgun itself. Now, the nice thing about the railgun is while it does use a lot of ammo per shot, it shoots fairly infrequently, and it only gets slower the more railgun accelerators you build. Or at least that's my understanding of it, that it increases the reload time rather than decreases it. Correct me if I'm wrong on that one. But with 1.5 per second, a simple ammo factory, which is capable of producing two ammo a second, will easily suffice. So we're going to place this right down here. And uh, honestly, given that it's kind of going to go in one direction, I may as well place it right there instead. And we can fit in a slightly bigger storage then for sulfur, which is obviously what we're going to be wanting to bring up. Uh, we will pop down you right there now in terms of the supply of the sulfur going to want a porter porter can live there we're also going to want an energy supplier who can live somewhere up here because the railgun is made of parts you've got the railgun loader place that there easy access to the ammo but we're also going to need to bring power up here because it is a railgun after all so this is where the supplier can then uh, live they will supply power to the railgun and the porter will supply ammo to the railgun now it's a simple case of adding in more sections but to just cover how the railgun works if I did nothing more than have this, and I believe uh, this railgun launcher, but I might not even need that. I could just possibly use this. Let me just see. Does this give me an increase? No, it does not. So the railgun launcher module and the railgun loader module are necessary. So at this point, uh, a round, a railgun round will take six ammo per shot. We'll, f we'll uh, use 1.5 ammo a second. It'll use uh, 0 0.13 energy per second if it's firing continuously the speed will be 360 meters it'll be pinpoint accurate it's got a zero degree firing arc the range is 300 meters rate of fire is zero uh, is uh, every uh, uh 0 0.25 uh shots a second so um a quarter every second so it'll, it'll shoot uh once every four seconds penetration is 15 meters now that's a part that you want to pay attention to that's specifically what the railgun is built around the damage is really high but it's the penetration that matters as if i understand it correctly to give you an idea if we have a look at armor this has a penetration resistance of six meters so a single railgun round as it stands would go through two armor blocks a shield, the basic shield, has a minus 25 meter penetration resistance. The big shield has a 75 meter resistance. You're probably not going to get a railgun round through a big shield if one exists. You, you'll possibly get it through a small shield, depending on how you build it. Now, when, what I mean by how you build it is we're going to add in rail accelerators. Every single rail accelerator increases the railgun damage, penetration, range, and projectile speed. Now, the railgun accelerator itself seems to draw power. So, we're going to need this uh, dedicated supplier. Uh, I could be wrong about that one. It could just be uh, reiterating the stats of the railgun itself. Now, at this point is where we want to pop the railgun head. And if we have a look now at this design, we should have an idea of how powerful it is, hopefully. Uh, let's see. Does it tell me how many sections? 70 plus 72 percent. There we go. That's nice handy dandy. So currently we've got five sections. You could have just counted it, but obviously uh, it's a little bit easier to eyeball it there. Now this, I mean, you know, plus 72 percent over the over the, the base. Quite nice. I would be really nice if we could get up to a, a, a solid 
uh, 100%, but it doesn't look like we're going to begin there for a while. We'd need another three accelerator components, which would uh, shove the railgun way up here. So one, two, three, and then the, the launcher would be all the way up here, basically protected by nothing. These, from what I understand, they will just explode all the way down. So you do want to keep this behind something a little bit more chunky. But there we go. That's that's about it. That's the uh, redesign. It's going to bump up our crew requirement by a solid eight. But I think we can manage that. We have a, uh, a, a rapidly dropping efficiency in so far as our uh, jump drives go. So much so I am sincerely starting to think that maybe having a jump drive at the front would be worth it it wouldn't really need anything extra over here so i guess why not there we go the scarab is running out of internal space quite quite quickly in fact a few times through this build i've thought to myself you know what maybe i should be moving things out a little bit more but i think i'm happy ish with where we're at where we've got a solid 87 percent hyper jump efficiency uh, crew complement is more or less the same. We're well within our power requirements. Well within our power requirements, actually. And our requirements seem comfortable for the time being. We will be loading this as we go directly from the, uh, the cannon factory. Now, I am a little bit concerned. And if I were to move anything forward for any particular reason, it would probably be the, fr the front section, which would give us a little bit more room, perhaps, to extend our railgun. But only one tile so i can add up you know what that worries me enough that i'm going to do it let's go ahead we're going to grab the entire front section and this will show how easy this is uh we are going to grab from about here i think uh we're going to need to rise it a single tile uh we're also going to want to grab everything down here all the way down to there yoink and then just plop that back in about there this will allow me to uh, put my mind at ease by adding in a little bit of extra armor between the reactor and all of this. Now, these won't be exploding. Well, this might be, but this won't. Sulfur doesn't, uh, doesn't explode. It isn't uh, reactive, certainly not the same way that uh, ammo is, so that should all be okay, ultimately. All right, let's uh, draw this out. Nice woven bit of armor there. Gotta love it. And there we are. I think that's pretty much everything we need. We are now ready. Hopefully that's got an angle. And that's got an angle. We're now ready to make this so. Now, it's going to cost a rather large amount of uh, amount of material. So, once again, I'm going to be off to uh, gather up supplies. And uh, I will bring it back when, it's ready, when we're ready to make it so. And then test out the railgun for the first time. All right, as the Hercules returns from another successful mining voyage... It's enduring quest to hunt for all sources of copper in the galaxy and exploit them. It is time at last to update the Scarab. We've got everything we need uh, nearby. And in fact, we're going to increase our uh, total stock of processes, which is very, very nice. But with that, make it so. Okay. Now, next step. As soon as we can, get down here and uh, hail the station and hopefully top up our crew a little bit. Is everyone on board? No, people are still moving around all over the place. There they go. It looks like everyone is where they need to be. Let's go and say hello. Hi. Uh, I would like very much to hire five crew. I would like to hire more than that, but five is all I'm going to get for now uh, as I leave some behind. Shh, don't don't mention that to the new crew. Uh, and I will transfer three over from the Hercules as well. And that's going to give us a complete crew complement on the Scarab. All right. So we're seeing people rushing back and forth. I guess this answers the question that I've always had. Will they move between different sections of the ship using airlocks? They will, which is terrifying because uh, the odds of them uh, not being left behind go down dramatically uh, once they start using airlocks. So let's uh, first and foremost sort out all of the various weird assignments that are going on. Okay, I think we're done. Possibly. We will see 
how this goes. Let me just double check that you are in fact assigned. You are. Uh, let's make sure that you are very specifically assigned to the uh, hyper jump drives as well. I don't want people randomly wandering around the ship to load jump drives. Everyone has got a job, everyone has got a place to be, and hopefully they will uh, limit themselves to said places. Now, uh, the last thing I would like to do is make sure that the correct locations are now set up for storage of the correct cargoes. So that means Hyperion uh, jump fuel in here. That is more or less it for us. Now, one interesting thing I noted whilst assigning everything is that uh, in terms of cargo delivery, this seems to only want to accept cargo of ammo. Now, that's important because something that accepts energy will accept energy. However, all of these accept energy. Now, I guess I, I was prepared for that, but uh, I'm not sure how my supplier gets to these. Do they have to actually have access? We, I guess we're going to find out. Uh, hopefully they will go in here and load these up. I don't know, though. We're going to have to see. I may need access all the way down. Uh, it doesn't look like they're bringing in... Oh, no, they've got an energy uh, battery there. No, they're heading elsewhere entirely. Well, this bunk should be loading up in here. Let me just double check, make sure that we've got... Uh, the correct crew complement, we do. There they are, I think. Sadly, I may have been uh, mistaken in how energy gets loaded into the coils, or rather the rails. Hmm, going to need a little bit more of a redesign then. All right, well, this change did uh, offer me some, some pause uh, to try and decide what way to best address it, but Considering that these are already running parallel to the uh, the four weapon sections, I think we may as well just use the reactors here, which should easily be able to accommodate them to load up the rails. That does mean that we don't need as many crew, and you can already see some of them heading back as we speak. They're going to, well, they're moving around, but I've already moved some crew back to the Hercules. So the Hercules hasn't, hasn't lost all of its crew uh, anymore, which is uh, always nice to see. But the Scarab is as good as I am capable of making it for now, though I can immediately see a bit of a problem down here. I'm not really sure why that problem exists. Uh, it seems that, oh, no, here we go. Here's the operations crew. That was interesting. The fact that uh, this station lost power. Have I not got enough operators around here? No, there we go. What? No, no, we are still shy. Some operators, it seems. Ooh, that's very unfortunate. Uh, okay, so... Ah, uh, of course. <laughs> I know exactly what happened. I was calculating this based on three. Uh, rather than, uh, the seven that we actually require. My bad on that one. So it looks like we are actually going to have to take those crew back. My, my goodness, this has been a, uh, design fraught with with difficulties, I will confess. Uh, let's pop the bunk. Well, we could have this uh, uh, bunk just going straight. Well, we may as well have the command crew all down here. I don't see any reason not to. Uh, let's pop that in there. And let's get that bunk hooked up. So you can dedicate yourself to this particular job. There we go. That should uh, help out. And I will get... Some extra crew. Sorry, Hercules. I know it was it was very brief, but you did have your crew back for a moment. Uh, nevertheless, let's uh, get those two extra operators across to the Scarab, and hopefully, if we're ever so lucky, that will be all we need to do. There we go. Now we've got suppliers who are just focused on keeping these running. No longer are they they having to moonlight as the captain now and then, but uh, that should keep us rolling. For the time being, all right, I think it is finally time for us to get out there and uh, see what this ship can do. Oh, actually, one of the last things, and I left this intentionally. I almost forgot, though, which would have been rather embarrassing. I wanted to just show you the linking of the beams, as so many people in uh, previous episodes were a little bit concerned about that. Let's get all of these hooked up, and then this one hooks up here. We've got two beams there, and this one should, hopefully be able to hook up as well and then finally can this one hook up cleanly Ooh, might be a bit tight there actually may want to move it across instead 
I guess we'll find out. Um, it'll be an easy enough thing to check. Let's have the scab turn around. There we go. And I would like you to aim uh, betwixt the fire ant and the Hercules. It's very, very comfortably across the Hercules there and then set this to permanent firing. Mm, no, it doesn't look like it. Let's just double check that. Yeah, as expected. Okay, so uh, go back to fire it, Will. Gonna need to move this crystal across one. Okay, well, it's good to have gotten that out of the way on camera rather than uh, off camera and then suddenly be in the middle of a fight and like, oh, I can't shoot things. This is awkward. All right, the Fire Ant and the Scarab are heading out. We have redesigned everything as necessary. Now, I'm going to address a flaw in the design that I've already noticed, and that is we are still losing power in the last two ions, and occasionally the second one. Now, what I would like to do is see this in an actual combat situation so I can decide how much of a, of a change we're going to need to do to address this. I've already kind of built in the room, and this was uh, intentional right at the beginning, that I can pull these forward because initially my, my, dis my idea to solve this problem was to give each one of these a dedicated small reactor. But I'm wondering if I might be able to get away with only giving one, uh, sorry, yeah, the last two dedicated small reactors and having the first two pull off the main reactor. I would prefer that solution if it were possible. Uh, we'll see what happens in the fight. Now, we're coming up on our target. We're going to have to go through the asteroid belt. That's always a little bit of an annoyance, but uh, it should be fine. How are you going right now? You're more or less getting in the right direction there, though I feel that perhaps you need to... Uh, have a little bit more of a tweak in your heading. There we go. And that will allow you to fly a lot straighter. Let's uh, delete that one and resave it. There we go. Right, let's find out what we're going to fight. I would like very much for the Scarab to get involved in this engagement. Now, I'm going to presently allow this to just fire whenever. These, however, I want to fire on my targets. Now, the railgun, I'm not sure exactly how uh, far this goes. Let's have a look. Will it give me updated information on its uh, full range? No. No, sadly it won't. It doesn't update the information based on the uh, modifier, but that's okay. Uh, we should be able to see it in the overlay. Right then, I would like you to start pulling ahead, little by little, and get into position. All right, let's find out where we need you to be. As for the Scarab, what is your new engagement range? Uh, doesn't tell me really. Oh no, there we go. We can see that line right down the middle is the maximum engagement range. And we can also see the two little lines uh, coming out from the crystals there, which is quite amusing. Let's uh, pop you about there. That should do nicely. And let's save your new attack defaults. Right, I would very much like you to be more or less here. If I could get that to happen, that would be grand. Uh, let's turn you a little bit more. Can I just select that? There we go. Let's turn you a little bit more uh, side on there. Right, let's see how the fire ant does here. I would very much... Oh, there's the railgun shot. Marvellous. We can see it going through. That's actually quite glowy. Lovely. Uh, all right, so what are you targeting exactly and how much damage is it going to do is the question. Let's watch this coming through. It's moving incredibly fast. We're going to go all the way down to one-eighth time and did a bit of damage to the armor. Didn't really do anything particularly amazing. We want that railgun to be a lot longer. But for now, this is, a, this is an okay test of the system. Scarab is going to try and keep range. Uh, the Scarab, though, I would like you to try... Oop, that is the wrong ship. Uh, nevertheless, I'm okay with it, I suppose. Try and take out those weapons, please, uh, Fire Ant. Scarab, though, I would like you to pop the ammo supplies wherever you can get to them. Just go through in that direction. They are approaching. That is fine. I can tell the Scarab to draw back. We are already loaded with more power, it would seem. And more ammo is being loaded up as well. Uh, okay, well, it takes a long time for that railgun to reload. Oh, I'd say that, and we've got another shot coming straight through. 
Okay, and missiles are away. So, in the case of the fire ant, at this point, I want you to circle around behind the enemy, if you could. And then we'll come along up on the other side. There we are. Weapon systems are being damaged with a railgun. Not amazingly impressed just yet, sadly. Uh, let's continue on down to the other side now, if you could. And then your uh, forward thrusters should be able to keep uh, pace with the enemy relatively easily. The scarab is drawing back at all times, but this is giving the fire ant plenty of opportunity to engage. Now, the only problem is on this side that it is actually the worst side to be attacking. Uh, let's allow the scarab to approach a little bit more, I think. Now, let's uh, draw you in just a tad. Your ions should be able to engage from about that range. Let's make that the new default. Now that I've seen how the railgun works, I think ultimately we're going to want that railgun to be more down here, a proper spinal mount weapon. And we could definitely look at doing that, having the uh, having a dedicated reactor, especially if we end up changing the reactors that we have to allow... Ooh, are you not engaging? Are you not able to engage? You should be able to. Uh, let's make sure that you are actually targeting the right things. There we go, and go all the way up. Uh, let's see those. There we are. Beautiful. Now, let's see. Only Sometimes only one will be able to uh, get a proper firing solution, but that's fine. Should be able to pop through there. there oh, wow, okay. Now, that was the railgun popping both ammo stores at once. All right, I uh, I approve. Let's keep up that kind of firepower, please and thank you. All right, let's try and dig right through to the reactor at this point. The Tapper 3 is keeping pace convincingly. Let's select it so I can uh, watch as it launches more missiles. The missiles are getting loaded there. Scarab's doing a decent job with the dual beams, but again, we do need to make sure that this gets uh, an even supply of power at all times. And uh, the Scarab as well. Please go for the cockpit at this point. Let's uh, just barrel all the way through. It shouldn't be too rough. I'm noticing this one going down, though, which is a very interesting one. It looks like uh, crew are moving around all over the place. All right, well, that's given me some very useful combat data for us to uh, consider the redesign. Uh, it's not going to be too much of one here, so uh, it should only take me a few moments. All right, the plan changes. As I mentioned, I'm going to have two dedicated reactors for the uh, furthest out ion emitters. And that is necessary a little bit of a redesign around here, but nothing too uh, severe. Now, if this works out, then we will probably at some later stage look to pull all of the command and control much, much further back, right back to the engine section, and possibly have to elongate this uh, in order to greatly extend the railgun barrel. Right now, I don't feel it's a particularly convincing weapon system, but it can be if we invest the, uh, the time, the effort to extend its length. If we could get this up to maybe 150%, bonus to damage and penetration this will actually be a very very convincing weapon system but that is going to require a very long barrel also quite a lot of power to run the accelerators as well so you know there's lots of there's lots of uh considerations there right let's make sure that all of these are hooked up correctly let's not be in build mode <laughs> my lord how many times am i going to make that mistake there we go and then this one should already be hooked up as necessary there we are right gonna have to redesignate a bunch of these to be uh supply and with that i think we should be good let's make sure that my operators are set to man these correctly there we go and each one of these will be set to man an individual uh ion emitter and the reactors themselves they are dedicated to just these emitters that should i'm very hopeful solve the problem now they're not nearly as efficient pulling their energy in but they've got 
almost no distance to travel, and uh, there are two of them to each one. This should, if we're lucky, sort out the problems. Right, let's get back out there and uh, test out the scab once again. Where are we going this time? We are going over here. And here we go. Let's get the fire ant in position. Please and thank you. About that close will do. Let's have a look at the ship we're facing. It's not a scary ship, this one, so I'm actually a lot happier with that. Uh, now, to get through these shields, obviously my uh, point defense, uh, sorry, my uh, railgun is going to suffer with the shields, so we're going to try and prioritize just kind of cutting through on a single side. Uh, the fire ant, let's have you, well, that being said, I mean, the fire ant's EMP is going to come in clutch here. Let's see how this engagement goes down. We've got the railgun shot in. Uh, it did actually do a little bit of damage, so it managed to peel through the uh, the shield at least a little bit. Let's have a watch. Where are these missiles currently going? They are both going for the, uh, the scarab. Noticing that the scarab is losing. I can't tell if it lost power there or if its firing solution changed. We're going to have to have a little bit more chance to observe that. Let's keep the fire ant relatively close. There's no reason to get too far away here. Let's uh, follow this down. And the scarab engaging again. Keeping a close eye on these ions. That one is not firing. Aha! I failed to... Uh, there is no mirror mode for linking the crystals. My bad. But there we are. Let's uh, get that going again. It is rotating. It'll take a little while to move into position, unfortunately. Right, it's slowly working our way through, though. Uh, if you could focus on these. So far, it looks like we are managing all of the power needs for the ion system, which I am exceedingly happy about. Unfortunately, the shields managed to come back up right at the last moment there. But this shouldn't be too much of a problem. Uh, let's go ahead and just dig all the way through if we must. Unfortunately, no no uh, cheat mode for this one. No ammo stores that we can explode, sadly. Let's make sure that you're able to deal with the incoming EMP. One of them at least went for the fire ant. And, oh, it actually went down the side there. Okay, an interesting choice, but so far it looks like the ion beam is now operating as we had always hope, uh, hoped it would. Uh, there is one more bridge section left. If we can take that out, then that would be amazing. It is turning around. Apparently uh, it feels that the fire ant it poses a significantly more danger uh, large threat. Uh, the fire ant, for its part, is actually a little bit closer than it should really be. Uh, taking some damage there on the thrusters, and it's gone. All right, well done. Very well done. In fact, that is a wreck I would very much like the uh, Hercules to come and collect because it's got uh, enriched uranium stores there. Okay, uh, it's a shame that there is no automatic repair, but uh, oh well. Uh, for, a, for a group, that is. Did we take any damage on the Scarab? No. All right, I am very, very happy with the Scarab's uh, improved ion system. Uh, we need a little bit more testing, though, to make sure that it is actually working the way I think it's working. But let's uh, get into the next fight. We've got a bit of reloading to do, so hopefully our uh, supplies can get on that. Maybe we need some extra supplies down here dedicated to running this. Might be a necessity moving forward. We'll see. Let's have a watch, because the uh, current... We've only got uh, two energy supplies handling this entire system, and I think they're a little bit preoccupied with the shields for now. So that might be uh, another place that we can improve the system overall. Uh, let's find out who you are and uh, whether or not you can stand up to the combined might of the Fire Ant and the Scarab. Hopefully not, otherwise this will be a very embarrassing episode, considering how much time we've spent redesigning them. Right, let's get the fire ant involved. Where is the uh, Hercules right now? Hercules is still en route. Let's have you get involved as well and slow down time a little bit. Right, there we go. Let's have a look at you. Okay, you have got uh, ion beam emitters. You've got a disruptor behind 
ridiculous amounts of shielding. Uh, okay, well, let's aim for the cannons first, I would say. Let's try and take those out as quickly as we can. And in fact, go for the uh, ammo stores behind them because that'll take out some shields. The fire ant, we're going to want you to primarily focus on their weapon systems wherever you're able to. I want you to draw back a little bit. Somewhere about here should be good. About there. You will outdistance the guns, but the ion beams will be a much bigger threat. Oh, their uh, point defense was taking on our, uh, our railgun shot there. Interesting. Teeny tiny beams. Uh, you know, to be fair, they're more efficient. All right, let's uh, start having the scarab use its reverse thrusters, which we've only got one booster on each side now for reverse thrust because of the redesign uh, we had to do here to make room for the uh, railgun. That brought them within the, uh, the, the lockdown area for the uh, innermost booster, sadly. Right, they are now aiming most of their weapon systems at us, and I uh, greatly disapprove. Uh, could we make sure we cut through there, and then once that's done, go for each of the ion beams? Where is the fire ant right now? Fire ant is uh, fairly far out, actually. All right, given that, let's instead do the opposite and fly right around. We should be able to continue... Uh, launching salvos at the the enemy ship the whole time. It's also lost its uh, its target for the time being. So let's try and take out the thrusters at the back, and then ultimately go for the cockpit. I mean, obviously going for the cockpit first is probably worth it. But uh, let's have a look. Are those cannon shells getting through? Well, they sort of are. Well, they were. Not anymore. Right at this point, there's only two shields for us to burrow through. We might as well try. We're a little bit too close for my liking, as my flat cannons are now focusing on attack. I really would prefer them to only focus on defense. I feel that whilst that is useful in certain situations, it will be useful in, in the situations where I will be in a position to control it manually and uh, change them up to focus on attacking as well. But for most situations, I want them reserving their fire rate for taking out uh, yeah we should be able to just punch straight through these shields and go into the reactor there we go and boom there we are very nice engagement indeed what are your missile stocks looking like well we've got enough HE but we are out of EMP so given that all right, following that last fight, we've got an abundance of combat data for us to work on. We have solved one problem, and that is that our ions now seem capable of firing indefinitely. But we have uh, uncovered a new one, and that is that our, I, our railgun system is really... A railgun system is in name only. It's not very powerful. Against an unshielded opponent, it does have a, a bit of kick to it, but... How many of those are we fighting these days? Not that many. I think this needs to be almost as long again. A, a true spinal mount weapon. That is going to require a much more extensive redesign, but I've already got ideas for that. Whether that's something we get to in the next episode or not, I couldn't tell you. We'll, uh, we'll uh, cross that bridge when we come to it. But the last thing that we're going to do in this episode is hand in a couple of our bounties. There we go. Thank you ever so much. We've got a couple more people that we can hire. Two, two more, to be exact. I will bring down the uh, Hercules to uh, grab them just as soon as we're able but that is oh actually we've got a new uh, new objective okay not too bad i will accept this one so we've got another station that we can visit in the next episode and they in turn will probably have a couple of jobs for us but that is gonna be it for now do let me know what you think about the redesign of the scarab especially the way that we are now using our ion beams to uh have two beams converging on a single point. I am going to need to redesign the railgun system. That is just a reality we need to face. And honestly, I'm a little bit concerned about it. I would like maybe one or two more shields that overlap this section, because if the super shields go down, 
There is nothing stopping a stray shot just coming straight down the middle and undoing an awful lot of work that went into making this. So uh, we'll have a look at that in the next episode, perhaps, as well. But that is going to be it from me. So until next time, and as always, do take care, Cosmetiers.